Welcome back. You're with Channel 199. This is the Legal Roundtable. Reedy Krauser, Chris Greenland and Manny Witts are my panellists here, an attorney, a judge and an <coughs> advocate. Before we get to your tweets, let's just uh, wrap up uh, our conversation. Uh, we were talking about uh, the, uh, the, the issues of, of why and the uh, evidence that still has to be led. We've been looking at the, the, the state of expert witnesses and, and what, how you break that uh, tie. I, I think we really wrapped up that discussion. Was there anything else you wanted to add before we get to our legal tweets. Perhaps I should just make the point, David, and, uh, and Chris uh, pointed it out uh, perfectly, that r regardless of the drama in court, the judge is trained to, to distill what is important and, uh, uh, you know, where to uh, uh, believe a witness and where in uh, which instances not to believe a witness. Uh, so despite all of the drama that may play out in court, uh, as Chris correctly pointed out, simply because a witness performs bad at face value does not mean that you reject his evidence yes. or his evidence in, the entire, in its entirety. In mm -hmm. fact, you, you touch on a point, I, I see uh, there seems to be a, a belief that the emotional outburst by Oscar Pistorius might have an impact on the outcome of this trial, which obviously isn't going to be the case. The judge will completely discount that kind of emotion in determining guilt or innocence. No, 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 it's, she will have to resolve it. She'll have to make a determination as to whether that emotional state ha had any bearing on his credibility and his reliability. Mm -hmm. For instance, worst case scenario, if she thinks it was simply put on, that's going to, she's going to hold that against him. But if she feels that it's genuine, then she won't hold it against him. Because uh, people have got opinions on that as well. But if it comes to an appeal, you're not, no judge at, at the SCA is going to be looking at emotions. It's going to be done on the papers. That's not going, emotions are not going to be reflected. Uh, except that she might put it on record. She might uh, include a, a descriptive, um, uh, shall we say, um, oh God, a description yes. of, of his performance mm. in that respect on the record. The, the way it's been interpreted is that he is crying because he wants to be uh, found not guilty. And I thought that was a, a completely oversimplification of what the emotions meant. True. And the demeanor of, of uh, witnesses in criminal trials uh, uh, has in the past uh, been described as an extremely tricky horse to ride. A, so, rocky, so, a rocky horse to ride. Okay. So, so judges uh, uh, will not overemphasize that uh, particular aspect in their assessment of the evidence. My, uh, I was, uh, the way I'd, I was looking at Judge Masipa, she would grant the adjournment simply because she needed him to be able to testify properly. Yes. Um, yes. And, and that was one of the reasons, rather than showing sympathy, she just needed him to recover so we could get on with her, him assisting her. And she also went one step further. She actually gave him the option and said, look, I don't want the record to reflect. I don't want your tiredness or emotion or whatever it is to affect what you're telling the court because the court needs to get your evidence down correctly and properly. And she <coughs> actually said to him on the one occasion when he actually said he wasn't feeling well, he was feeling very, very tired, which is understandable after a few days in the witness box. And... Um, she made it very, very clear that the record, which is the transcript of everything that's said in court, um, that is typed out, that, you know, I don't want it to be affected in any way. I don't want somebody to come afterwards and say, well, the reason you gave that answer is because you were either on medication or you weren't feeling well or you had some other outside influence that might have affected your answer. So I don't want that to happen. Okay. And I think judges, the judge will confirm that you have to be cautious with that because, as you've correctly said, if this matter goes further on appeal one way or the other, you always get a happy party, you get an unhappy party, the winner or the loser. Somebody might take it further. You don't get witnesses again. You argue it purely on the record. So okay. it's what the judge and what the what let the record show what it shows. So I think the judge is very cautious. She has to be careful that the record reflects that's what you said and there wasn't something that impacted on you that made you say that, either tiredness or medication or an outside reason. Well, I certainly learned something more about the emotion of a person and the, uh, the accused in the witness stand. The tricky, the rocky horse to rocky ride. Horse to rocky ride. horse to ride. That's what the Supreme Court of Appeal have always said. And I can tell you why. It's very, very simple. And I think Rudy and the judge will confirm that, especially the judge with his years of experience. You get some very, very glib good witnesses that can get in that witness box. They are tuned policemen, people who are regularly there. They are very, very good witnesses. They know how to deal with cross-examination. You get somebody who's never been in court before. They 
deadly honest, but they get nervous, they panic, something goes on, a question's asked, they suddenly start looking like the worst witness when they're really just coming to tell the truth. So that's why they've always said, be careful when you're judging a person and how he performs in the witness box. There might be emotion, he or she might break down, but you can always look, and I think the judge has correctly said, when you distill it, you can really work out. Even a person like Mr. Dixon, Sure, there were certain aspects that might be considered unsatisfactory, but look at the other aspects of his evidence. There might be stuff that will actually assist the judge. There might be facts and opinions that will assist the judge in coming to a conclusion. Let's have a look at uh, some of the legal t tweets that have come through, the questions that have been asked uh, using the hashtag roundtable199. Uh, if, the, if the defense shows the state's case is critically flawed, Riva could not have been shot at 3.17. How does that affect things? I don't think that's in dispute, is it, the, the time of, the, of the, the shooting? Well, I think the issue there, the, the operative word is flawed. Uh, critically flawed as well. Well, I don't know what that means. No, the fact no, of the matter is that she was shot and killed. Yes. So that's what's critical. I don't any, know if, if any other flaws will be resolved. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not in dispute that time. I haven't heard anybody... I, I, think, I think the timing's reasonably accurate. If one looks at the cell phone calls, the security calls, you can more or less pinpoint it to around about that time. If you look at all the witnesses and their timing, it happened more or less between those few minutes. That's when it happened, give or take a minute or two. Stephen says, can the judge find Oscar guilty of a lesser charge? Uh, competent verdicts? Who's dealing with Rudy, do you want to really, handle really competent verdicts? Yes, I, I think the first point to be made is um, there is no such crime in South African laws such as premeditated murder. Premeditation is only relevant uh, when it comes to the issue of sentence. Yes. Um, uh, there, there, are, there, there are a number of competent verdicts in respect of a murder charge, so where the state fails mm -hmm. to prove uh, uh, through in their case uh, uh, the murder charge, uh, there are competent verdicts uh, uh, such as culpable homicide, which, uh, which has a negligent element to it, uh, assault with intent to do grievous bodily harm, and a variety of other offenses is specifically stipulated in the criminal procedure. Act. So it doesn't have to be listed on the charge sheet, it doesn't mean a new trial or anything, it just means that the evidence that has been adduced satisfies the requirements for culpable homicide if it doesn't satisfy the requirements for murder. Most Absolutely. definitely. Look, yeah, it's either murder or culpable homicide. Yes. It's not going to be an assault with intent to do grievous bodily harm. Unfortunately, the person is deceased. Yes. So it's either one or the other if, there's, there's a, if there is a conviction at the end of the day. But Rudy's correct, legally speaking, he's 110% correct again because there could be those alternative, or com not alternative, competent verdicts. I think I know why charge. Stephen's asking that because there are concerns that because culpable homicide doesn't appear as a charge in the charge sheet, should he be acquitted of murder, uh, then he, he walks free. We have to explain then the, the, the process of competent verdicts. Uh, can the defense team use the expertise of a public servant like police or soldier in a criminal case. I'm not quite sure why Godfrey wants a soldier uh, involved. We do have a lot of police involved as well, but possibly we'd extend that and say, uh, ca how, how does the defense team rely on expertise? What, how, how are those assessments made on who to bring to bolster your case? You have a look at what the elements of the offense are, you have a look at what your defense is, and then you look to see which experts you need. And in this particular case, Possibly they might want to call a policeman in regards to the contamination that they've been alleging of the scene. So they might want to call a policeman. And I see they have had a policeman there, someone I know very, very well from years back. And he's been sitting there regularly. He might come and say, look at a crime scene. This is how you preserve the scene. What happened there isn't ideal. It isn't satisfactory. And it might affect overall the way you look at the evidence and the way the evidence has been led by the state. So you can, you can bring as many expert witnesses as you can, uh, or sure. I suppose as, as far as your client's bank balance stretches. Yeah. Well, it happens mm. frequently in practice, David, that uh, the state will in fact instruct an expert to, uh, to assess a certain uh, uh, piece of evidence. And for a variety of, of reasons, the state may decide not to call that witness. And that witness will then be made available to the defense. So the defense may, may, may well end up calling a state expert uh, in the course of its case because that expert may uh, okay. advance the defense case. It happens frequently in, in practice. Okay, so it do doesn't depend on your budget. Jocelyn says, uh, no toilet paper in the Louis Reva supposedly used Oscar Pistorius never mentioned hearing it flush. Why does Nell not query? We get many questions like that, not only the issue of the toilet flushing, but also why didn't the dogs bark? Why did Kerry Nell not ask that? Why did Kerry Nell not ask why, what did Oscar do when he went upstairs after he brought the body down? Let's just do another blanket question here, Rudy, on 
Why does Harry Nell not ask certain questions that the public feels should have been asked? What would the reason be? I think the short answer is that uh, for purposes of the inferences he wants the court to draw, those issues are irrelevant. Yeah, man, you agree. He's it's right. Just, it, it, it doesn't help his case. It, it doesn't bother. help his case. You don't need to... Look, he's asked just about everything from top to bottom. Maybe he didn't ask that, but it's not necessary to ask that. He's trying to stick to what the actual defence is, and he's trying to rebut and negate the defence. So That's not, what he's asking. It's not a case of he's forgotten to ask something he, obvious. He, he doesn't forget much. Yes, okay. Chris? No, as I've said before, you've got facts in issue. You've got facts relevant to the issue, and my colleagues have pointed that out. Also have surrounding facts and circumstances. Those surrounding facts and circumstances might either help or explain the facts in issue and the facts relevant, or they might not. So Harry Nell's making up his, uh, made up his mind that they don't help. What now? We've got a minute left. Uh, during this break, I know Judge Masipa, like the, uh, the stern grandmother, <laughs> as she came across, said, take the, the court record, start working on it. What do you anticipate happens now between these, the, uh, amongst these no, two? No, no, very, very simple what's happening. What she's actually saying, we've spent a lot of time, we didn't actually budget for this time. So please, in this time that you've got, you've got a running record, you've got the transcript, because she would require written heads of argument, summarizing the evidence, showing the inconsistencies, discrepancies, contradictions, showing the elements of the fence, backing it up with case law. So she expects him to do their work so that once they're ready to argue the matter after all the evidence has been led, she'll be in a much better position with the assessors to hand down a judgment. So don't delay, because sometimes judges and magistrates can take quite a while uh, at the end of the case, at the end of the evidence, because there still has to be argument, you request time, they'll give you that time, go prepare heads of argument, Reedy will tell you in cases that he and I have done together, and it can take months and months and months. So she's saying, make haste. You've got it, you've got all the tools, relax, have a good holiday, but while you're there, see if you can get it ready, unpack it for me, and let's hear what you argue. I'll echo in part her sentiment of, mm. to the three of you, relax and enjoy the holidays, if mm. indeed you are able to do that. Manny, mm. Chris, Reedy, thank you very much for your time. Thank, Only a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you, David. My thanks to Manny Witts, to uh, Chris Greenland, and to uh, Rudy Krauser as well. We'll have more debate from the Legal Roundtable after the court recess, uh, which I remind you will run from tomorrow, Friday the 18th, until Monday the 5th of May. That's when court resumes at uh, 9.30. A word about our program going forward. The Oscar Pistorius Trial Channel will show all the court testimony that we've heard so far, from day one up until today, in its entirety. That starts at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning and throughout the Easter weekend until midnight next Monday. That's the 21st of April. And at that point, we pop down until we resume live broadcast. We'll pop up again on Monday, the 5th of May, with Devi Sankri Governor at 7 a.m. If you're not in front of your TV, Channel 199 is available online to qualifying DSTV subscribers, and that full channel is available 24-7 via live streaming to PCs, to laptops, at oscartrial.com. It's also available on your walker. From me, David O'Sullivan, have a good break. Good night to you and over now to Katie Katapodis.